Good morning, everybody. This is Christine, and this week we're going to be talking about scrapbooking, the very, very, very basics of scrapbooking. And if you're new to the scrapbooking world, hopefully you can get started and this will help you with getting started. And if you're a veteran, then maybe you'll pick up some little tips and tricks along the way. Um, today, we're going to be doing a lot of talking and not a lot of doing. Um, I'm going to be showing you stuff versus tomorrow we'll start actually applying some of the principles. So today what I wanted to talk about is where you start. What is your purpose? And why that's important is if you don't know your purpose for doing scrapbooking, it's easy to get overwhelmed. So before you even get started, you need to know, am I scrapbooking to tell my family's story and get all those photographs into an album? Or am I scrapbooking for the creativity and the artistic side of it? Third choice, you land somewhere in the middle. For me personally, it started more in telling the story and has landed in the middle. So my layouts tend to tell a specific story for our family, often include multiple photos, um, but sometimes I want to play and get artistic and creative. And so I tend to do both. But it's really important for you to know, as a crafter, am I interested in just telling the story, getting as many pictures on there as I can, and having that done? And if that's the important side of it to you, you know that and you can avoid spending too much on products. You can keep from getting overwhelmed by the amount of products. You can know which products to go to um, versus the other side of things where you're just going to want to create and have fun and get messy and cut up a bunch of papers. And that's just a different approach. So I'm going to kind of show you how I work with both of those approaches and how that begins with picking my patterned paper. So one thing I would love to know down below in the comments, and I may or may not be able to answer them as we're talking, but I will come back and answer them after the show, is what is your purpose? What is your reason for scrapbooking? And that's just helpful for both me to know going forward this week, but also it's helpful for Paper House to know as they design products what, what people are looking for and where they're landing at this point as fans of this company. So... As I pick out patterned papers, I have two different approaches. Number one, if I have a very specific, specific story I want to tell, for instance, a birthday party, a beach, Christmas, then obviously I go for those kinds of papers. So like this collection is geared at beach, summery themed um, pictures, right? Um, not necessarily, it's not super to the side of you have to use this for beach or or water because obviously there's not even actually any water on these specific papers but it definitely has that beach tropical summery theme going with it you're not going to use these for snow pictures right so these pictures that i have right here are of my kids and their cousins at a pool these are the kind of thing that i would pull out to go with this now, I could either start with, oh, I have these pool pictures, and I'm going to look for some bright colored paper because I see lots of bright colors, and plug that in. Or I can say, hey, I really love this paper, which I do. I want to use this paper. So what pictures do I have that might work for that? Okay, so that is one way I approach it. Um, and actually, I, I really just covered both ways. <laughs> Because I may have a specific paper that I also want to use. Like I said, here, this one, I love this paper. I want to use this for something. I'm just waiting for the right pictures for it. Versus, let's look at this picture of me and my husband. We were out on a lake. Okay, again, very specific moment in time. I'm not just telling a story of my kid being cute or something funny they did or anything like that. It's a specific moment. So I'm going to look for... Papers that fit that, again, like the other ones wouldn't have worked as well. Or I don't want 
Christmas papers or winter papers. I don't want papers that are all pink. I want papers that are gonna go with this. So you can see this outdoors collection. I pulled this out. This green would be really nice with this because of all the green in the pictures. I also was drawn to this photo paper. And Paper House has a lot of these papers that are photorealistic, so they look like somebody took a picture. And they can be a little bit tricky to use, but when you find the right picture with them, they can also be incredibly cool. And so like you can see, like this one, it has to go on this paper. <laughs> It fits so perfectly. Now, where I'm going to go with that, I have no idea. But I do know that during the next week, while we're here together, I'm going to use this paper with this picture because I love the photorealisticness of it and how it goes together. And also the tones from my picture to the photo match well. If it was too different, it wouldn't work as well. But in this case, when I set this one down and looked at this paper, I just thought, yep, that's it. And that's how it happens a lot of times. You just look at the papers and know. So I'm going to take you through a few examples of my paper, my layouts that I've made over the years. I've been designing with Paper House for uh, almost eight years. So I have had, I've got some really old ones here, but they really showcase how I pick my papers. Um, I'm not going to start with that one either. So this one is a good example of when I wanted to just be artsy and creative. It was not as much about telling the story of this moment in time as giving myself a break and allowing myself to create. So I turned my picture black and white in this case so that it would work with whatever color scheme I went with. And then I got crazy with the paper. I've got mist on here. I've got papers that are all torn up. I've got starfish that I cut out of a patterned paper and popped it up. And this was really just about the art for me. I've already scrapbooked this picture in another one where I'm telling the actual story of the day. And sometimes it's fun to just go down that road. This next one does both, okay? It allowed me to explore some creativity, but it also, allowed me to tell the story. So obviously this is about a puppy. <laughs> and Paper House is the best for having themed product available. So you want to tell a specific story of something like a puppy, a birthday party, weddings, that kind of stuff. They've got stickers for it. Um, and these are their 3D stickers. So you can see I used those throughout. These are also all their papers. You can see where I made my paper choices. The dog has blue eyes, a blue collar on. I accented that with the blue, okay? Then I let my products dictate my color choices beyond that. So I had these cute banners in a patterned paper that had the red, green, yellow, and orange, and I just picked my products then based on that. I also picked this patterned paper that said love on it. And this is actually, I wanna say it's from a wedding collection of theirs. Um, and I made it work for a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing with themed papers. Even if they do have a theme, a lot of times you can twist them. Um, so just by adding puppy on there, I made it into a puppy paper and it works perfectly. So now let's go back to this Boston one. Okay, this is, again, I specifically targeted the product based on my picture. My husband and I were in Boston. So I wanted some patriotic paper that would fit. Paper House has patriotic paper. They even had paper that said the word Boston on it. They've got patriotic stickers. And you can see these are a more, they're not the bright red, white, and blue. They're more of a subtle jewel tone, I think is the right word for it. Um, but you can also see on this how I told the story, but I also was able to get creative. I added in this string art and was allowed to was able to be artistic without taking away from the actual story behind this picture. I made this layout at least two years ago, maybe three. And I obviously, I can still tell you exactly what it's about. And that's kind of my goal. It's as long as the story is still told and I can be artistic with it, it works. This is another older one. And I wanted to show you this one because it showcases some of their wedding products. Um, they have lots of wedding products 
and you can see how even with just one picture on there, it tells the story really nicely. And they were nice and neutral too. They also have a lot of wedding products that have um, kind of that farmhouse feel to it, which is so popular right now. So that's a really nice option as well. This is another one. I think that I actually made this one in like my first few months designing for them. This one is obviously, again, a birthday themed one. And you can see how it does a nice job of really telling the story using different products. Um, and this one didn't require a lot of artistic creativity just because the products take care of it. There wasn't a lot of extra needed. These are all designed by them and ready to roll. And so I was able to just put everything together in a nice square grid. Here's one where I went a little more artsy and you can see where I based the choice of my products on the picture. I liked the bright here and it's a bright sunny day. So I opted for bright colors. Now I've got a couple more here where I wanted to use a specific product, but uh, my pictures didn't match. So I printed them in black and white. That's another good option. Also, when you have pictures of multiple people. So for here, she's wearing, it's her in the same moment wearing all the same color, but the colors of her outfit didn't work. So I changed the the black, well, sorry, the pictures to black and white there. In this one, I've got three boys in three totally different colors and it didn't work to put them all together, but I wanted it all together. It's in the same moment, but they totally clashed. So by turning the pictures to black and white, it allowed me to pick whatever product I wanted to use and make it work, but also tell one story on one layout instead of spreading it out on three different layouts. This is possibly my favorite paper house layout that I've ever done because I love that it tells the story and the product really enhances telling the story. Um, it also, I was able to get pictures of each of my kids on there fishing. It just really came together to work and uses a wide variety of products, but really focuses your eye in on telling the story of them fishing. So that gives you an idea of day one, how we pick our pictures, how we pick our paper. And tomorrow, we're going to talk about how you begin to build the base of a layout. So thank you for joining me today and be sure to check back in tomorrow at 10 a.m. Let me know again down below what's your purpose in scrapbooking. Are you going for simply telling the story and knocking out as many of those pictures as you can? Are you going for just the absolutely creative side of it or do you land somewhere in between? And I will look forward to hearing those comments and then I will see you again tomorrow at 10 Eastern time.